Hey Printousers, welcome back to another shop tour. This is Bruce from Printavo. We are really excited. We are in Fort Worth, Texas, hanging out at, I hope you can see this and zoomed in right, the Skinny Armadillo with owner Justin. Hey, Thanks hey. for uh, being able to hang out with us today and showing us around. Yeah. So this is your 10th anniversary though. It is. Congratulations. Thank you. Really, really cool that uh, you guys have pushed through, especially through last year and everything. You guys are really, like, what does the customer base look like for you guys out here? Um, so mostly schools, uh -huh. uh, probably 70% schools, and then we got a lot of small business and uh, musicians, bands. Got it, got it. it. So the good thing when the pandemic hit was that it didn't really affect schools or bands or sports. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Naturally, I'm kidding, of course. I demolished everything that <laughs> yeah. we were working on. Um, so, so we had to make a lot of hard choices. Um, we actually bought a laser to start doing uh, face shields and things like that. And of course, by the time we got the materials for it, and learned it, and was, it. it was kind of past time and uh, didn't, didn't really work out. So we started doing other stuff, laser cups and patches and things like that, which has kind of turned into a whole other source of revenue that we had not planned on doing. Hmm. Um, we, even, <laughs> we even jumped into sanitizer for a little while and again, did not work out how we hoped, but it's okay. Well, you know, and the other the other thing is, of course, a lot of the musicians um, switched to online videos and things like that, live mm -hmm. streams and stuff. And so we had a ton of people that were wanting to support them through live streams. So we actually came up with a music for good campaign that we sold and donated back to. You know, somebody said, "Hey, I want to support Mickey and the Motor Cars or Tyler and the Train Robbers or Reckless Guy or whoever it is." Sure. Uh, we would print the shirt, different colors that said "Music for Good" on it, and then we donated those and sent it over to those guys to their. PayPal or, or however they want to get it. So right. kind of, and you've been doing a lot of print on demand, which I want to get to in a second. Sure. Um, we show us around the front room too. Yeah, sure. So um, 10 year anniversary, when we first moved in, we were just on this side, 2,500 square feet. Mm -hmm. um, and then about three or four years in, we expanded to this other side. So we've got about 5,000 square feet total. Um, we got our fancy rhinestone machine over here that sounds, we call it our little cow because it kind of moves as it uh, <laughs> puts the rhinestones down. Um, and of course, um, heat press and vinyl and numbers and glitter and all that kind of stuff. And then this is, this kind of, we call this our learning wall. A all right, bit all right. We've, we've learned how to do certain things over here, like the, the fountain blend or whatever, um, foil, which was not fun to print. Uh, different <laughs> gradients and overlays and things like that. Our first DTG shirt, one of our first DTG shirts was over there. The last shirt that I printed on the manual before I swore off manual printing. Wait, which one was that one? So that's the, that's this uh, karate one. Is your here. back still hurt looking at this uh, one? It's, it makes me want to karate chop it. <laughs> um, yeah, six color front, two color, I mean six color back, two color front. It was about 250 pieces. And How long did it take? Uh, it took me five days to do that by myself. Okay. And so, so that was the, what was that transition like? Like were you here or were you at another, were you at home? Or? So uh, we've always been here. Okay. Um, we just, uh, so this kind of transitioned from a previous business that my mom had and we just kind of joined forces. So she already had, a client base and then I just came in and learned how to screen print and all that stuff. So that one was probably done, I would say two months into my lear my learning curve. So mm. uh, the graphic designer that I had at the time, um, she just graduated from college and so didn't know how to do film separations or anything. So um, that was, it was all a good fun learning <laughs> experience. <laughs> so the thought was, um, we'll, We'll start small. We'll just go manual because we don't know. I mean, yes, we had a customer base, but how how well are we at running a business? Right. Um, my mom had been doing it for a while, but you know, what, what was the profit like? What was the cost? You know, we just didn't know because she never had overhead of a building and machines and equipment stuff like that. She was a contractor. Sure. So that just it was a whole new thing. So we just said we're gonna start small. So we had a little dryer and we had you know the like I said the manual press and. Yeah, about three months in, that shirt right there changed my mind real quick. I was like, if we're, if we're gonna grow, there's there's only one way we can do this, and it has to be without all that. So right, that's interesting. To think about. How, how did you did you find it was a used piece of equipment? Is that a forum? No, um, 
I don't like buying used equipment because mm -hmm. I don't know what somebody may have done with that equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, and the only reason I say that is because previous shops that my mom had used as a contractor, like we had <laughs> seen them phys physically abusing <laughs> some of their equipment, you know, trying to get it to like, if something's not working, you just, you know, hammers and wrenches and whatever. And so I just didn't want to take that risk and everything's under warranty and it's fine. As we're starting to ship more um, orders and things like that, um, we use a lot of stuff from Uline, which if you know about Uline, then you know about Uline and their catalogs and how fun uh, that can be. Uh, and how many show up randomly. Yeah. Uh, so my rep came in and he told me the number of catalogs that they print per year. How many? He said, I will tell you, I said, I will give you my car okay. if you can guess how many catalogs. What would you guess? Here. My guess was 22 million. He said, you're not even close. I want to say the number was 192 million catalogs. <laughs> and, and I told him right then, I said, that alone makes me not want to use your company ever again. He, is... he had a deer in the headlight look like, it was... are, you, are you serious? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. yeah. Like, I, I know what products you have, boxes. Yeah, yeah. 90 something million. Yep. So Brandon Leonard over at Inferno Screen Printing actually told me about, uh, actually, I think I read it in Eat Kitchen. Uh, he oh, had, yeah. Uh, he had an article in there about the different things that he had done. And so um, him and I have been talking a fair bit. We met at ISS a couple years ago, right before the pandemic happened, sure. actually. And um, so we just kind of talked from time to time. And he said, hey, I'll, I'll send you samples of the bags that we're using and you can make the, the choice that you want to do. And uh, so that's what we did. He sent me some samples and we picked the one that's... Which one did you go with? So we are using... Um, Eco, gosh, I can't remember the name. You have, do you have? Uh... Uh, yeah, I've got some. So Eco. Oh, the Eco clothes. Eco yep. clothes, yep. So and these are the paper ones, which is kind of cool. These I are the paper a lot ones. Of the plastic ones. So there is, um, there's this one that's a little bit thicker. It's a little heavier. So when we're putting sweatshirts or t-shirts or whatever in mm -hmm. here, um, this is actually the one that not this size, but we use one that's similar to this weight instead of the paper one. And this is what's shipping, not like the inside of it. Okay. Right. Yeah. Got yep. It. Okay. Yep. So, um, and they do make, you know, a plastic one that's recyclable, made right. from recycled materials and stuff like that. Uh, but really this came from Brandon. He was just like, hey, this is what... Um, is this one Econ Close too? So this one's not, this one is uh, no issue. So... Um, Shouts out Brandon in the in kitchen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I just thought it was really cool. You know, we send out, like I said, last, the last two weeks we've had two um, field day orders that were about 500 pieces a piece. Got it. And so, you know, it's just, that's a thousand less pieces of plastic out there because I know and it's not anything that they're doing or whatever, but when you get your shirt, you're just gonna rip it open and throw it away for the most part, unless you see that it's, you know, this kind of recyclable type material, because if it's plastic, you're just gonna chunk it. Exactly. Um, so anyway, we just, it's a small step in the direction that we're trying to go, and That's super I, think cool. it'll, I think it'll be good. That's awesome so, to think about that. Yep. Wait, what are the, uh, what are the laws you've got up here? <laughs> so, those um, are the immutable laws, and to be honest, I actually I think it came from the Go Giver. Um, is, oh, you've got all the, the book. books down oh, here. Oh yeah, I've got all kinds. Traction, of we bring yeah. that one up oh, a lot. Yeah, Made yeah, to yeah. make it, get a grip, profit for you. Yeah, two profit first. Yep. Fourth edition. I'm, I'm, a, bit, edition. I'm a big profit first guy. Yep. So uh, yeah, we started that about uh, two years ago. I guess. How'd that go? It's going really good. It's made a huge difference. Really? Um, just just in like your financial comfortability or, or just general business investment? Or uh, both actually. Mm. Um, so uh, we went to, or I went to um, Shirt Labs. Oh, mm -hmm. hey. In Portland, Shirt Lab. Shirt um, Lab, Marshall and Tom. Yep. And um, I met Mark Coudre mm -hmm. um, and I had been kind of toying with the idea of going Catalyst for a while. Right. But I just didn't, I just never felt like it was the right time. But uh -huh. you know, it's one of those things of, is there, is there ever a right time to do anything? Sometimes you just gotta just, do it. just go. And so um, last October I joined Catalyst 
And so that was really kind of the first part of the transformation of just looking at my business in a different uh, different light. Got it. It's like, okay, yes, we are making t-shirts, but also we're trying to, you know, make sure that we can pay everybody right. good salaries. We can take care of them if they, you know, want insurance, we can do that. If they don't, right. then that's their choice. And if, you know, if we want to provide better, um, you know, settings here for them to work on, send them to conferences or whatever if they want to go to, then, you know, that's... So you just feel it's a lot more financially sound oh, yeah. of a business? Yeah. I mean, you know, we were always running into the problem of, okay, I have this money now, I've spent all of this money, and as owners, I think it's kind of a habit that you just, hey, this is what I'm paying myself, whether it's 500 bucks or nothing. Right, I'll just know. take that. But yeah, yep. like, it, here's what's left over. And the first time I heard Profit First, I mean, it was probably three and a half years ago. It was almost like a Dave Ramsey moment where you just kind of, it clicks and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, right. I got this now. And so you just start building that and, you know, I'm super nerdy with spreadsheets. And so I just started building stuff like, okay, how soon can I pay this off? How soon can I pay this off? What's that gonna look like if we do this over here? And we just were always running into um, more stuff that we needed and not enough money to buy it. And the other thing that came out of that, uh, the catalyst part was getting paid up front. So that's one thing that we just never did. It was like, hey, you know, just here's your shirt, come pick sure. it up, and then, you know, you can pay us. Is it 100% down payment? A lot, so, but you, cause you, guys, you guys work with a lot of schools too. It is, so that's the tricky part, um, is that the schools still are not that way. So yeah. we still have to rely on POs and things like that, but it's become where everybody else is kind of funding that until the schools pay. Got it. But for the most part, the ones that we work with, usually within a week or two weeks, they they pay. I've right. got a, two, a couple of schools that don't, and I don't work with them anymore. Mm, so Picky. Yep. That's good. Yep. You got a lot of really good books here. What do you think was the biggest transformational book? Um, so I will say the number one that's not a financial book, yeah. uh, E-Myth um, is oh, the number one okay. for me. I, I haven't think. read that one yet. So it's great because it gives you two perspectives in the same story. So like where you have traction and um, um, what's the other one? Get a grip. Yeah. So same story, but one's like told from a story point of view and the other is just like the, the logistics of traction and how to go about implementing it. Sure. So Emith, he does both. Like he'll tell you like, here's kind of the story. And then he gives you a scenario of a girl that has a business that's running this pie shop and like what makes her do what she does and all of that stuff. And so, uh, it helps with SOPs and just the whole, like it's a, it's just a complete package book, um, I think. I've, I've probably listened to that book five times now. Got it. That's and it's awesome. one of those that every time you listen to it, you're like, okay, now I'm at that point in my business. That makes sense. Whereas okay. before it may not have. That's super cool. We There are a lot of shout outs <laughs> over here. We're going to have to drop a lot of links here, but that is awesome. Uh, let's check out the back. Okay. So this is kind of how. Welcome, welcome. I love the high ceilings. Started. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, we can actually go in the screen room here. Sure. So, yeah. all the screens over here to the left have been coated and drying and they clean and wash everything out there, of course. Um, and then, yeah, so we were kind of talking earlier, the best, maybe one of the best investments I've ever made. Is this <laughs> can, we get, can we get a thumbnail <laughs> there for- This uh, little thing right here. Like, can I just, can I just hug this? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, because for so long, I mean, coding screens is one of those things that you, you kind of have to have a knack for. Sure. I mean, it's a challenge when you first start learning. A, and I mean, you can even look and see even this, there's, if you forget to turn the air compressor on, it's bad. I can tell you that. Um, yeah, learn that the hard way. <laughs> I was coding all the screens, so when everybody left at the end of the day, I'd come in and I'd grab all these screens and manually code, you know, 14 of the the 120s and 14 of the 225s, and you know, it was an hour later. Not that this is like way faster, because it's about the same speed, but anybody can do it. Got like, it. You literally just pop a screen in, hit start, and go. All right, so. Unicode versus iImage, which one would you have done first? Um, Although, didn't you buy these at the same time or similar So, time? 
similar time, I bought this probably six months prior to the eye image. Okay. Um, I would probably buy Unicoat first. Typically what happens, so I have two people that run the screen printing department and one of them washes screens, the other one comes in here and she'll coat. Um, and so it's kind of a, they're just such a, they're my dynamic duo. They're, they're great. They're what, <laughs> part of what makes our team so good and so fast um, because they just work well together. And one will clean, one will wash, one will burn the image, the other one will wash it out. She's taping it up, she's setting it up over here. And so they just, they just feed off of each other. Sure. And, and it's awesome. Um, but yeah, I mean, it takes, you know, before our, our graphic designers were printing all the films and trying to keep the films together and, you know, we had envelope systems and we had stacks of envelopes and we started alphabetizing them and then you had like nine racks of films that are sitting over here because we have repeat customers, not a ton, but enough to where it's like, do we really want to throw the films away and make new ones every single time? But then, you know, over the years you start getting stuff where, hey, we want to do this design, but we want to tweak it just a little bit. And so did they grab the right set of films? Right. Did they, is there another set? And so not that that can't happen over here, but it's a lot easier for the printer to come in here and look at the work order in Printavo and make sure it matches what she's about to print on the screen so Got that it. doesn't happen as often. Still happens because we're check. human, but you know, um, it's definitely cut down. So the Starlight, um, I probably got six or seven years ago. Uh, we, okay. We've had it for quite a while, um, but we just, so when we got the CTS, it's always had the glass in it, so we had to get the retro kit to take the glass out um, for the LED. But whenever I first started 10 years ago, I was using a dual cure. I was like three and a half, four minutes to burn a screen, you know, then you're waiting to rinse it out, hoping that you coated the screen right and all that stuff. You know, all the learning curves that you go through. Um, and so now we're at about between six and eight seconds per screen uh, exposure time. And, you know, which then creates another bottleneck somewhere else because now you're washing out screens faster uh, because you're burning them, you know, instead of three or four minutes, now you're burning them in seven seconds. And so you have 20 screens that have been burned and you can't wash them out and dry them that fast. Mm. So, Do you think the eco rinses next then or some sort of reclaim um, automation or i don't because it's it's kind of a funny question you know i've thought about um both of those actually um but we're sort of in a weird transition phase between how much screen printing and how much direct to garment printing we're doing so we just bought a second dtg okay. because we're trying to do more on demand fulfillment sort right. of so we'll still, I mean, we're, we're always going to do screen printing because we, you know, there's the schools that are going to do dry fits and I, it's not at a point where you can do poly on DTG yet. There are, there are some that can tell you that can be done and it probably can, but not to the quality that we like and feel comfortable sending out. I did have the diamond back and then uh, we, we made a little switch uh, to the rock. Um, five or six years ago, uh -huh. I guess. Um, so the Diamondback that we had was pneumatic, so air was going up and down constantly. Um, and it was just it was a weird thing. I was actually set to buy a Sportsman, and Rock and m and just happened to be set up right next to each other at that ISS show. Got it. And we literally sat there for like 30 minutes just watching guys print and tear down and set up and like, oh, hey, unclip this, do this over here, move this over here. Right. And so just at the end of the day, we're like, this machine seems a little faster than the other. Oh, okay. So, yep. So we went from an 810 to a 610. Uh, again, mostly schools, so not a lot of high detail printing, not a lot of high color printing um, at the time when we bought it. Now, of course, there's people that want more and more colors and lower and lower quantities, which again contributes to the DTG switch. Got it. So. Got it. But yeah. And then the, uh, this is an electric dryer. It is. So BBC, Eric, shout out. You don't have to do another shout out. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Add it to the list. Um, the, <laughs> the Eolus. So we've had this for probably three years now, I guess. Um, forced air, it's been great. Um, wide belt, 54 inch. And, uh, was it just the size thing or is it the... So we actually don't have gas out here. So we wanted a gas dryer, but could not do that since there are no gas sure. lines out here. We actually so put expensive. a propane tank outside and then was we ran it in and all of that stuff. 
Um, but it just, you know, it was just burning through too much and it was costing too much. So we got, got rid of that and went with this. So That's awesome. Yeah. And you, is this for the DTG side or what? So what is the stock? So over? the stock we actually keep for, um, if we're running an order like that 500 piece order and there's a shirt that has a hole in it, then we can just go grab it off the shelf, pull it and keep the order going it. and it ships out at the same time. Got it. So we're mainly we're, because it's similar like with schools and yeah we so we try to keep any of the schools that we do we try to keep their basic colors red yellow green blue black grays um and in multiple sizes so i try to keep a five piece quantity on each size so youth small through 2x i have five almost of every size in that color Got it. so that way you know, it inevitably happens where somebody's like, hey, I forgot to order a shirt, I need a 2X. And that's another situation where it's come in handy where you don't have to stop the order. Right, or I'm missing one, this one, and, yeah. and they hand it out to the wrong person. Yep. Or, yeah. So you can just come over, grab that, we take it out of inventory and, and restock it. So, um, but yeah, that's that's saved a lot of time over the years, um, having those on, on hand, so. So awesome. we're starting to do a lot of um, stores and fulfillment, of course. Um, so this is a store that we printed today, and then I'm actually out of my envelope. So those hopefully will be here tomorrow, so we can <laughs> load those up and, and ship them out, out and uh, those will get picked up. And then we're kind of a just-in-time shop. Like we order the shirts once everything's been approved, um, and then it comes in, we print it, and it goes right back out. And usually. 48 hours is typical turnaround time Got it. Uh, as long as long as stock and that's kind of become our new catchphrase is like we can turn around in 48 hours as long as stock's available if something has to come from california or new how, jersey or how whatever. do you guys handle that with the customer and we just tell them up front if somebody calls and they're like hey we want to do this color shirt and here's the sizes we need right. we'll look before we even place the order Got we it. try to look before we even place the order but i mean even right now it's to the point of you could put the stuff in your cart and go back after lunch and get ready to order and you're missing like 12 pieces or 40 pieces or whatever sure. because it just it just goes right. like when it's there it's almost it's kind of a hard thing because you don't want to like push people into a cell and feel like you're trying to like hey you really need to order this right now because it might not be there later because it seems like a tactic you know but like literally right now that's happening a ton there's actually <laughs> These are kind of fun. This is a, um, there's a bat sanctuary that's uh, not too far from here. Um, this is another one that we DTG'd, and these are actual bats that have been rescued from the sanctuary. Um, this is a nice print on a dark shirt. Mm -hmm. Good good DTG work right there. <laughs> is this on the new Epson you bought? Yep. It is. It's a big boy. It's, it's pretty big. So it's awesome because the uh, the white and the CMYK are in the same print head, so right. it's printing both at the same time. Got it. So it drastically cuts down print time. We have uh, one print uh, that we ran a few months ago, four and a half minutes. Um, this one ran it in a minute and 11 seconds. So massive, wow. <laughs> massive increase in time and what we can produce. I mean, we we're going from literally between 10 and 25 shirts on the GTX to 40 to 50 shirts an hour on this. And are you keeping the stock for this here? Or are you ordering once a week or something? Or so how does it... it's, it kind of depends on, on the order. Some of these, so like I've got um, two bands that we're working on right now. All of their shirts are here that I just ordered in. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll print those tomorrow and they're picking up on Friday for shows on Saturday. So how, how are you determining what jobs then? Cause it sounds like you're running a lot more here which is less than the lower quantity. Is it, is it right. like a 50 or less? Or well, is it it's kind of changed since we got this. I mean, before it was like, hey, you know, we can do one. So the idea really be between keeping this one and the GTX was we have a customer in Austin that he normally orders 100 to 150 shirts at a time. Got but it. they're like photograph quality shirts that we just aren't able to print here. Um, I'm sure there's a shop out there that could do it. That's mm -hmm. not our that's not our strong point. So that we put on the DTG, um, but it was taking five and a half minutes on that machine. So for 120 shirts, it was taking five days, and that's not doable. Right. Uh, not only that, but it was taking up time from other smaller jobs being printed. So we bought this 
with the idea that we would be doing fulfillment on this and the bigger orders and then like small orders over there. So if somebody's got five shirts or 10 shirts, we'll print them over there. If you've got, you know, 50 or more, we'll do them over here. Or if we just want to burn through a bunch of shirts real quick, then we'll do them out here too. So. That's awesome. And then yeah. this is for fulfillment for a lot of these stores or the, these are custom orders? Yeah, so it's a little of both. So we're not really doing custom one-offs very much. Uh, well, really we don't want to do one-offs because that's not, it's not really our business model. I mean, we're really trying to, so like if we have a band that has five different designs, the artwork's already been done. So we're not doing a custom design for one shirt because mm -hmm. the artwork's already been done. We're just mm -hmm. loading the artwork, hitting print and, and we're done. Mm -hmm. So like this um, hoodie right here uh, is another band that we do stuff for. Um, they just finished their Indiegogo campaign. And so it's, it's kind of a crowdfunding thing. You know, you go on and you donate 25 bucks and you get this hoodie or you donate 50 bucks and you get a hoodie and a t-shirt and a koozie or whatever. So um, these are just test prints to make sure that all the colors came out right um, and everything on the stuff. And so now that that campaign's closed, they'll give us final numbers, we'll order the apparel and then we'll start shipping it out. So the CDs will come to us and we'll just fulfill the whole Indiegogo campaign for them. That's really cool. It's just the interesting uh, seeing how the switch is and depending on your market and everything else and how you're helping people. It's, it has shifted some um, from when we, like I said, we've had the GTX for, uh, in August, it'll be three years. Um, and the quality is great. We, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the quality of the, D, of the GTX. I have a shirt that was the first shirt that we printed on it. I've worn it probably a hundred times in the last three years and it looks as good today as it did the day we printed it. It's just as soft, there's no cracking, there's no peeling, it's great, but it's just slow. Right. And we are not slow here. Right. So we just, like I said, we try to turn stuff um, within two to three days if we can. Um, and that's kind of one of the things that sets us apart from a lot of other places. So the intent for this was to build face shields and masks. Um, you know, for healthcare workers or schools or teachers or whatever. Right. Um, but by the time we actually got the laser here, the laser came in pretty quick actually, but finding the materials and stuff for the face shields, it, it took a little while to get here. Um, and so by that time, we just had to transition again and say, okay, we're gonna try to do something different. So we started doing these cups, so we started doing laser patches um, and really the patches have just kind of happened in the last month or two. We've been testing different materials and ways to stick it onto a shirt. Oh, that's super cool. This smell like a little firework. <laughs> so I prepared earlier. Boom. That is really cool. <laughs> Thank you guys. <laughs> That's awesome. Whew. Yeah. Don't recommend it on another one. Yeah, it's well, so this just pops out. We'll clean that off and good to go. Wow. Now when you guys are hanging out tonight and have some whiskey or <laughs> or whatever you want to do. Right. This is awesome. Thanks so much, guys. Hanging out with the Skinny Armadillo crew. We've got Simon, we've got Justin. We're down in Fort Worth hanging out. What an awesome shop. It's really cool just seeing the growth and changes, especially with like, not just COVID, but with just technology in this space. But anyway, we'll sign it off. We'll see you guys in the next shop tour. <laughs>